Hi, it's Maseka Kalisha, and I just finished smashing my interview with Hollywood Unlocked, uncensored. Hashtag I am the storyline. My Hollywood Unlocked interview was really interesting, very salacious and all the real tea and nothing but that. And I really think um, it went better than expected because I'm just a real open, honest person. And all I know how to do is tell the truth and read. <laughs> so I give clapbacks with a little bit of tea and some behind the scenes insight that you might want to find out. What up, everybody? This is Jason Lee. This is Hollywood Unlocked Uncensored. And I'm Melissa Ford, a.k.a. The Curve Queen. I'm Kendall Kendall, a.k.a. Best Friend. <laughs> and we, didn't, we still haven't scared him away. We're on show three. All right, so everybody's been asking me to get the queen. I don't know what the fuck this queen shit is about. Mm -hmm. queen, I mean... Masika, <laughs> Kalasia. Is it Kalasia? Kalisha. It's Alicia with Kalisha. a K. So, okay. like, Alicia, and then we from the hood. Are you, are you from L.A.? I'm from Chicago. Well, I mean, I'm from heaven. Because okay, you're giving me that. <laughs> but heavy, heavy, I always, girl, I always say heavy is the head that wears the crown. Amen. Yes. Did you give me Valley Girl? Well, you know, I'm from Chicago, but I'm very Hollywood. <laughs> You're not, are you South Side of Chicago? South Side of Chicago. Okay, okay. so mm. that's where the other part comes from. Oh, yeah. Hollywood, yes. too. Okay. So, so yeah. um, your name comes up frequent on the show. I mean, what else will we talk about? <laughs> We just had Hitmaker on the show. I was uh, told not to ever call him Young Berg again because Young Berg is he's, uh, he's retired. Dead. Yes, he he's didn't a, die. No, he's no. He said he he said Young Berg is dead. Oh. I am Hitmaker. That's a character. Yeah. Okay, you so know? Hitmaker. Hitmaker. Make ah. Okay, well, I mean, he's out there making hits. Yeah. So uh, speaking of the hit, did mm -hmm. he really beat you in that hotel? Because who I'm, said that? That's what the news is saying. You know, the news was saying Apparently that the blogs are correct, right? No, I never... Because, I mean, all the bullshit you guys say has to be right, right? Absolutely. Uh, absolutely we, not. Listen, <laughs> we, we, we do not report false news. We are not Donald Trump. We you tell the truth. You do speculate. And you do say well, things with a little bit of opinion. There's definitely opinion. Like on this show, there's a lot of opinion. We're going to yeah. share it today. But it's ter in terms of like reporting news, we don't just say, you know, this nigga beat our ass in the hotel as a way of creating a story. That's what people are saying that we say, well, this is what they're saying. Yeah. No, the thing is, I never said anything and he never said anything. People just made their own Then why did he get unemployed? Well, um, so we actually did get into a pretty serious argument. It was very loud, very elevated. In that hotel argument, room. In the hotel room. Okay. But again, it was, no one saw anything. It was just right. people yelling. Right. And... I guess like Wait, all the people on the floor, the white people, the, the good, white people, the good Caucasians, right. all the Anglo's called <laughs> the police. Who are these young shiny Afro men? Yeah. that you're screaming. <laughs> all this shiny ass bling. So you know, the the people in the hotel called the police on him, and he was a little belligerently drunk, and mm -hmm. he was drinking whatever Ray J had in his bottle, and that could be. Mm -hmm. He did, he, he did thing. say that Ray J put Molly's in the bottle, and that I he, mean, I'm he, pretty he, sure it was more than that. He said because I was just a cafeteria in New York. And Tiana Taylor and her boyfriend, I've never said this, but... Husband. Husband. Husband, yeah. sorry, sorry, sorry. Her husband, her man. They had gotten a big fight in the back room. Bottles and just everything was in a disarray. So well, She is feisty. So he said the story here, the reason I say that, y'all were at cafeteria. Yeah. And he swiped that good credit card and that shit said, nigga, no, don't I try it. <laughs> <laughs> he ran the fuck up out of there. No, really, like... I didn't realize how fast he was. <laughs> you thought that was Usain Bolt at the table. Listen, I mean, he ran faster than some people run for me in real life when there's no cameras around and they don't want that tea. But um, no, so we had been filming the reunion, you know, it was 18 hour days mm -hmm. and we were starved. Mm -hmm. So we were all at the cafeteria. It was his treat, his idea. He's like, like some of the producers and some of the, you know, people. You may want to call the bank and clear that card before you treat people. <laughs> But you know, who knows? Your car can stop because you're in yeah, a different state. Sure, or slide. Sure. So who knows why? But the car was declined. Okay. And then he was like, Speedy Gonzalez. <laughs> so, you know, I paid the tab for the table and called the car service. And then I like got his food to go. And when I came back to the hotel, he had the nerve to ask me where it was. So I threw that up. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, here it is. You, you know. And then I, we just got into an argument and the police were there. <laughs> So where did it go from that to he was uh, arrested and sent to Rikers Island for <laughs> domestic violence in New York City? That no, is listen, I, don't, I never called the police. I never said it. I never did anything. No, the, like, I don't even know from what I was told from the hotel. It was like the most amount of police calls they've ever had. <laughs> mm. um, but, you know, the, they were there and he was it was freezing cold mm -hmm. and he was walking outside with no shirt on. Like, what's the problem? Okay, you're high. Let me first see, of all, before I, before I joined Love and Hip Hop, I watched you on the show. I thought you were one of the prettier girls. All the girls in Hollywood weren't pretty at the time. I'm not gonna go down who was pretty and who wasn't. Uh, I Thank really you. I love Nikki Baby. She's mm -hmm. much prettier after first season. First season, she got that good coin and she got some shit together. <laughs> yeah. and I, I love I love I love I my agree. girl Nikki, but but I really liked you. And I remember 
before I got out to the show, remember I called you? We actually you, had a few conversations And I was like excited. It. I was like, you're coming back. And she was like, I'm not coming back. I'm like, what? And I gave you some fair warning, some reality. And I didn't listen to him. And but I, was I right or was I right? You were right. Okay, yeah. so, so <laughs> we want to know what were some of the warnings that you gave Jason? Well... Again, I cannot give all the reality TV secrets, mm-hmm. as you know. Mm-hmm. But um, I will just say things that aren't as they seem. Mm-hmm. And um, don't, don't trust nobody. All no, them don't motherfuckers are fake. Don't trust nobody or nothing. Everybody is like plotting to figure out how to get to the the most uh, time on camera, or the biggest mm-hmm. storyline, or whatever. Se- I was mm-hmm. a season one bitch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hashtag season one bitch, and, and she, hashtag I am the storyline. And so. she gave me, she gave me, you know, because but it's literally like Hunger Games. You don't know yeah. who yeah. the fuck to trust. But yeah. the, the craziest part about it is you don't know. Like they film in a very different way that you don't expect. Mm-hmm. And by the time you figure out what's going on, it's too late because <laughs> you're already <laughs> fucked. Yeah. So it's and like that's where I come in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then you freeze frame and be like oh oh <laughs> but no the funniest shit like you and Jess is hilarious y'all got me dead I don't know one of y'all like then froze it and had a, a whole razor fixed a bitch's wig and oh, yeah, got in yeah. there and you know, gave a bitch eyebrow therapy like y'all just be having me on the floor they're funny dead. right it's hilarious okay so we, so on the first season you and Nikki were not friends well Nikki wasn't on the first season until we were halfway done with it cause you came in with Molly Moss' girl no, I got hired by myself. Okay, you were on your on your own because yes. I've been trying to follow this story. Mm-hmm. Okay, I've, I've so actually here's watched the, the season and don't remember yeah. how here's the fuck the real, this all Well, it doesn't show like that. Yeah. I was hired by myself, and you know they all the producers loved me. They told me I was great and everything, but you know they keep it real with you. Like, hey, if you don't have like a love interest, you're going to be a B character, like mm-hmm. some people that we never saw again. <laughs> and uh, I didn't want that, so I'm like, okay. And the manager I had at the time, we ran into Molly Ma at the W, and he was like, well, we should do something with him on the show musically. So, you know, he was like, yeah, I'm really interested in doing that. And we were like, let's have a meeting. But he was mm-hmm. on his way back to Vegas. Mm-hmm. So he flew us back to Vegas to have a meeting with him. And then he tried to turn it into this whole big, like, oh, I'm in love with you. We should date. We should this. We should that. Mm. So I brought it to Mona and Stephanie. And they were like, <laughs> we don't believe this shit. But, you know, for me at the time, I'm again, I'm green. I was a season one bitch, mm-hmm. you know, my damn self. And he's like, yeah, I have Khloe Kardashian and Tyga and I'll bring tigers and lions and bears. I'll have Chris Brown running in the background and I'll bring wow. you jets and mountains and lions. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, he's going to do all of this if I put him on TV? <laughs> so, you know, I was like, great, yay. And then we filmed with him and he was just horrible, like, Every time they told him to say, like, okay, this the scene's about. And uh-huh. they even told him, like, listen, Molly, it's not about you. It's about Masika. If you're yeah. okay with just, you know, being a part of her story. Yeah. Oh, totally, totally. So, like, okay, we're going to talk about, you know, Masika, what you did yesterday, da, da, da. So, ask Masika about her day yesterday. Action. Yeah, so I was just in the studio with Jesus and Drake, you know? <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and they kept, like, cutting and telling him what to do. And he just wouldn't get it. He would put his glasses on. Uh-huh. And they're like, Molly, take your glasses off. The continuity. Oh, he'd take them off. Action, put him back on. And it was just like the dumbest shit. So we filmed him out. Like mm-hmm. we filmed at his house. Then we filmed again like we were doing a furniture scene shopping. And it was mm-hmm. like a breakup scene. It was mm-hmm. like, you know, this is not going anywhere. You're fucking psycho. Yeah. I moved on. Four months later, uh-huh. five months later, here comes Miss Nickel Baby. And nah, don't do that. What? You know I love Nikki Baby. And well, I, for that, you. That's the thing I have to uh, know. But listen, you and Nikki have had this up and down relationship. And this is part of what I didn't understand. This is Wait, what I'm about to tell you. I no, can answer your question before okay, you can ask Okay, but let's, let, let's not do the Nickel Baby because you and whole niece running around these streets. And I'm not going to go after your friend and her psychotic, delusional, getting fucked anally ass. Because you know uh, I haven't seen the sex I tape. saw Nikki's sex tape doing the exact same motherfucking things after she was half well, asleep. I'm blind so. shit. Continue. I bet you are. <laughs> but she was on all fours going. Go ahead. Anyway, so we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. Everybody and on that show got a sex tape. I actually don't have one yet. <laughs> Please but send I, to <laughs> info at the Hollywood on But the I am open <laughs> to. We'll, you talk, know, we'll talk about Fetty in a minute. Continue. Listen, go ahead. Anywho. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wouldn't dare leak a sex tape. My baby daddy, that'd be really, really weird. Anyway, so um, yeah, so season one, then yeah. she came along. Now, okay. Nikki actually tried to get hired. As Berg's girl, they said no, and it's a sin's girl, and they said no. But why not for Berg? He would I don't have been know. a good look for. She would have been a good look for them. Well, here's here's one thing I will say: like Mona does want authentic relationships, mm-hmm. and a lot of people mm-hmm. create fake ones. Mm-hmm. They so, do. What yeah. is that about? Because they're just you know whatever. You're not gonna get no camera. Exactly. Time. They're desperate. Like for even when I brought Molly, it was nothing. I didn't want a relationship with him at mm-hmm. all. Mm-hmm. He felt like that would get him 
on sold and mm-hmm. it actually made it even worse. So you worse. were never in love with him? Oh God. Because I did see a picture of y'all hugged up somewhere. That's how it all, that's how, because me and Molly grew up together. We oh, I'm both so are sorry. From, we both are from Stockton, California. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I've known him since he was 16 years old. I know him as Jamal. Jamal and Molly Maul is, he's on some other Tigers and Bears shit. But yeah. I know the nigga who was, anyway. Anyway. So you, you, so when you guys were. I mean, no, we did hang out. Like we were friends. Because I did see the picture. The because that's how I think the world kind of found out that you guys were. That's how usually know. people find out most of the shit about me is this goddamn <laughs> picture somewhere. And it's like, <laughs> but anyway. Um, or emails. So then Nikki, yeah. so then how did Nikki get into okay. that whole. So Mo- they dismissed Molly and we moved on with the whole season. Uh, like we started in like January with contracts and we like started filming like February somewhere around like July, they fired half the cast mm-hmm. and Burke had a whole girlfriend that got fired. Joey. Yeah. Well, he, he talked I, about it on the show. Uh, I think it's Joe. Joe. Uh, Joy. 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 Yes. Bow yes. Wow's baby mama. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. So like pretty me girl. and Burke, yeah, she's very pretty. Yeah, very gorgeous. Me and Burke had filmed a lot of scenes together. And then like when you lose a cast member, you cannot keep the scenes where you talk about right. the people in it. Right. So all of the things we did okay. was lost. Okay. So it looked like we just became friends episode seven or whatever. Yeah. And that wasn't the case. So Molly had been trying to finagle his way back on the whole time. Because Burke was just here talking about how y'all hung out and hooked up and just the sex and just everything. Um, I didn't hear all that actually. No, but. oh, it's aired today. You, it's, huh. it's out there. I bet you would air that <laughs> when I'm when I'm here. It just lined up that way. I oh, swear, I did. I swear. That's how the stars on. Uh, he, I will not. No, I will not I get defend a lot of him. I get a lot of credit for just, shit that when I don't it's not be warranted, doing. but right. it just so happens that you are taping because you, on the mm, day that because you know I don't hate you. Airing. You know that. Well, we've had some we've issues. Had, no, we've had an interesting relationship, but it was it was all not, good just a week ago. It was all good until the reunion, but we could talk about that. But yes. you know, I don't hate you. Yes, I, but you do. You do throw some shady shade. No, no, no. You no. got a good oak tree. No, no. It's just that <laughs> it, here's here's kind of where I am. I've been around for a little while. You know, I'm, I'm older now. I'm, I'm, I'm 40, so I'm, I'm grown. And I just feel like, for me, I just am at a place where I want to be happy. Mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck what it, that means, whether it's working or relationships yeah. mm-hmm. or friends or even phone calls. Mm-hmm. Phone calls right now ruin my day. Just the little name pop up. I'll be like, <laughs> whole day ruined. So now I got another phone where now I don't answer the phone everybody got. Yeah. I answer the phone that calls me and gives me money. Mm-hmm. That's smart. Because money makes me feel mm-hmm. good. So it's That's not smart. like we've never... Mm-hmm. I don't we never hate actually you. had an issue. No. Yeah. I think it was just other people that had issues <laughs> that were friend. tied to us. Your friend. And yours. But anyway, <laughs> I'm going to make this ridiculous okay. long story short. Yes. So Molly came back to whoever producers. He found a back door and slithered his way in and was like, I have Nikki and we're dating at the same time. So it never, so it never happened. So that became a new story. It, it never, like Nikki and him had broken up before I even met him. But okay. even if that was the case, I had no interest in dating this man okay. whatsoever. So here she comes clunking around in her bad wig with her bad hairline trying to, trying to get a storyline but she had already tried and failed multiple times so mm-hmm. it was like I was just thrown into the middle of some bullshit like what the fuck is this shit I haven't talked to this motherfucker in 17 years right but you know I was like whatever but what I will say what people did you know Nikki know, before the show I never, I never met her okay. like I saw her out in public and I was like what a spectacle this is but I didn't know what who was she the was spectacle though I mean just you know the whole she was a, she's a production, production. yeah and, the, and, the, the, and this was before she had that you know she's been as polished so she looked like a cheap sex doll like you know one of those blow up sex dolls it was just like the you know the whole so it was it was a production but the craziest part about it is we really kind of like got into it and i was mm-hmm. like you're dumb as bricks like mm-hmm. you don't understand like this man is using both of us to stay on this show right and i'm the glue between all of this so if you want to stay on the show too, it would behoove you to come my way. Was Nikki really like legit in love with him? I think she was. Yeah, yeah. She, no, I honestly, I honestly think she was. She loved him. And then one thing I will say, Nikki <clears throat> is she is a businesswoman. Yeah. So I think she kind of realized what was going on. Mm-hmm. I got a call from a block number back when I used to still answer those, mm-hmm. and it was Nikki. And we had a private meeting at the mm-hmm. W, and we talked about what was going on. We mm-hmm. went through text messages, compared mm-hmm. notes, and realized, okay, so he's trying to come up on us. So I let's, will never forget the time I was do. at the W drunk with Nikki, and Safari rolled in out the blue, but he didn't. They were talking on the low, but he didn't want nobody to know. And I'm sitting at the bar like, yeah, that's the wrong person to be sitting with. <laughs> Your ass is you were there. You were there that day, but you you Probably. missed them because they had went on a motorcycle ride. Oh no, middle. you told me that Remember? she just left. Yeah. Yes. So we had actually kind of like hashed it out and decided that we were just going to be bosses about it. And apparently it worked for her because Mm -hmm. she stayed on and he was gone and they brought me back or whatever else. So, you know, for me, it was never like a real beef. It was just, okay, 
I really think she was in love with him, but he was just trying to get on with however he could get on TV. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, she's just being dumb. Mm-hmm. So, but he left first season and then you Yeah, but he was up, he was only a special guest. He was you, never a cast. But then you <laughs> left first season too because of whatever happened at the reunion, right? No, I didn't leave because of the reunion. I never got no, fired. No, what happened with Berg? Or, but I never got fired. Up. Okay. Yeah, I didn't come back season two. Mm-hmm. Like, there was a lot going on. No one knew I was pregnant. I didn't announce my pregnancy until I was... So you were pregnant while we were filming that yeah. season? Okay. Yeah, and, and that's no one, why you weren't there. Well, that's the main reason. But I mean, okay. there's a lot of different reasons. But I actually had my own show that I was producing. Okay. And um, I had a full camera crew and everything. Like, wow. when I when I announced I was pregnant, I announced it on Power 106 with my whole camera crew. Mm. And at that point, I was like six months pregnant. Mm. I was hiding it. So the show was actually called Pregnant Pumps. And I was it was about me still like working and finagling my way through Hollywood and nobody knows I'm pregnant. Mm-hmm. So it was actually really cool. And mm-hmm. then... But see, that's why I think for me, where I became a little cautious with you, because you're very crafty with the words. Oh, yeah. Uh, there, oh, yes. There, there aren't a lot of people that have that craft. I, too, am a little crafty with the words. So Her clapbacks so like, are, are epic. Yeah. She's the clap. She's the clap. clap back back queen. Queen. Thank yes. you. So here's what I didn't understand. So you and Nikki had whatever you had on TV. And we know there's a there's a parallel life in the real hip, love and hip hop world. Mm-hmm. There's the TV stuff for some, most mm-hmm. people. And then there's the call you after the scene, want yeah. to be cool type shit that yeah. I just don't fuck yeah. with. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you guys had the breakdown later on, when you had the baby, she sent you a gift and she was genuinely like showing you a gift of love. I think, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think so. And so I thought, okay, well damn, that's a peace offering. Cause mm-hmm. when a motherfucker, y'all don't get along, they send you a nice gift. It was Tiffany no, it was, Blue. It was, it was very sweet. Like her and her mom. Yeah, um, They sent me uh, a, a breast pump and like a really beautiful like bunny and like mm-hmm. rattle thing for my daughter. Like really gorgeous. And it was very sweet. And then you come back in the show and this is what kind of fucked me up. I feel like I know everybody got to kind of have their crew, but like I didn't see you clicking with Moniz. I just did not see that because mm-hmm. I feel like you're a real bitch. Now, and I'm not saying bitch in a bad way. I mean mm-hmm. like I no, feel I like it. you're a real like because when we talk. We just ran to you with me. Keisha Cole just ran mm-hmm. to you. Like I feel like I feel like I run into you once a week at least. It's crazy, <laughs> but I just feel, ran to oh, you yeah, last, last night. Last night. Mm-hmm. Hey, Kajana. Yeah, mm-hmm. but no, I feel like you were just real, and that's what gravitated. That's what I gravitated to. And then I felt like when you guys had the peace offer, offering, then all of a sudden, bam, you clicked up with Moniz. How'd that all happen? But what did Moniz have to do with, with Nikki? That's what I don't get. Well, because like, they had that beef because I didn't of, know. Well, you know Fizz and all that. Well, no, you gotta. Under, well, that's the thing. Moniz really didn't care that she was talking to Fizz. Like Moniz has actually tried to auction Fizz off to people. That's like, hysterical. So it wasn't. It wasn't something that bothered. Why her. didn't she ever auction him off to Jason? He was checking for him. Who? Fizz. She, listen, we are not in <laughs> <Jason>. <laughs> <laughs> But I've she, actually known Moniz for eight. Nine years, like you know, like we've known each other through other people and music industry and whatnot. So I've I've known her before the show. Um, so I don't really see how the two correlate. Because I feel like you're very predictable. I feel like you're calculating when you need to be, but I feel like you're also very intelligent. I feel like you're. I feel like deep down you're a good person. Personalities don't seem and, and Moni- to. And, and I know, and I know how it is because you were. Don't kinda, seem like they would mix. You were kind of taking a little. I think dig that's at, why we do mix. You were taking a little dig at Nikki, so I know how it feels to hear this. But no, I wasn't. I mean, you, not not season three. I no, no, right now when you call oh. her nickel or whatever you call well, her. Well, I mean, it's I'm, shiny I'm, and it's cheap. But I'm saying, when you come to Moniz, when you talk about Moniz. We don't think, I don't think of Moniz the same as I think of you. Yeah, maybe opposites attract. I mean, and if you work at a psychotic, you know, hospital, there's a worker and there's a patient. Mm. So mm. maybe that's the mm. relationship. I don't know. I just feel like. That was just inappropriate. Not really. Not really. Because I mean, I don't, I don't like making like, you can make a joke. I don't like making like mental jokes. Oh, that's not a joke. I meant that. Yeah, but still. It's not a joke. It's still the time of Because place. I feel like there's a reality that we all live in, right? We live in this world. It's a real world. Mm-hmm. And then there's the TV world that ain't always real. Mm-hmm. And I think at the at the reunion when she attacked Brandy's kid, that for me was like, oh, okay, all the shit now, we see, got going I would on. I would totally agree with you, but you allow people to attack my child all day long. And you actually said something that I heard on the way over here that was extremely disrespectful. What was my that? Child. You made a comment to Berg about what if he found out he was my daughter's father. And honestly, I almost turned my car around because one thing I don't play about is mm-hmm. my child. And I think everybody can say mm-hmm. that. Like we can make jokes all day long. I don't care what you say about me or whatever, but when you bring my daughter into it, it it's a whole different level of disrespect. So and that's just disrespectful. It's distasteful. Mm-hmm. It's not even funny. Yeah. So if you, so that's the clip that you're talking about, but if you watch the whole interview, what we said, well, it wasn't available what, until I sat down in this chair. Oh, we'll text it to you. <laughs> <after the show. laughs> but what, what, what was said was that, there, there was a rumor out there. So in our sheet, that was one of the rumors that were out there. Do I believe that? One of but the wait, how many? do I believe that Hitmaker was your baby daddy? No. 
Mm. That's on our sheet of questions. So, I mean. But, like, so do you just get to the point where you don't even become a human? You just read what's on your sheet? Well, yeah, I ask questions that people are talking about. Yeah, sure. but certain things you'd be like, mm, inappropriate. Yeah, but that's the thing. In this world, and especially. Like, you, this, you, you, you just said kids are off limits. Wait. So, kids are off kid, limits kid, when it's Moniz, but not with this. you. Let me say this. Kids dun, are off, dun, dun, kids dun. Are off limits. No, no, no. There's no dun, dun, dun. Kids are off limits if, for example, the the lady's son just died in Vegas, right? Four year old Aiden, who really impacted me. Uh, so, and mm. a lot I'm of people. I'm going to the are, funeral, by the way. It's on Sunday. Yeah, it's, I, it's yeah. too much for me. But I reached out to the mom. I reached out to Facebook. Whatever. My point is, is that there were people on there when I said what I said about Facebook needs to let her post about her kid. Absolutely. They were saying she's a fraud. She's this. She's this. Now that to me is attacking someone's kid. Mm -hmm. Me saying, well, the rumors out there that you are. The baby's kid. I didn't believe that. I said that I didn't believe that. It's still and distasteful. he said it's not true. I mean, of course it's okay. not. Well, it's, still, it's still distasteful because it's about a kid. So I just think you can't have that double standard to say, well, she said a comment that had to do with a kid because what you said had to do with a kid well, too. it was so very different. Case, she said her kid was fucking ugly. And that's and your you, friend. No, it's actually worse to give my child a different father, actually. Well, I think that it, is actually worse. I think that for somebody to say that a helpless little kid who can't even defend himself Belongs to a man that she's ugly, never met? That's pretty ugly. offensive too. Well, I, I don't, That's well, I don't think they're ugly. I don't think they're ugly. Well, you're not a parent. You're not a parent. So yeah, like, but either either way is wrong is what I'm saying. You can't say you don't like what she said and you feel okay with what you said. It's the same level to me. I'm not okay with what my, what Monique said about a child. I'm not okay with what you said. I'm not okay with well, a lot of it. But let's so not, it, let's just put it all together sure. on the same fucking no, plate but that's and what, eat the shit. That's what I think you guys do really well on the show. I think you guys know how to stir up a bunch of shit and make it look like the same thing when it really isn't. And and I think sometimes the audience isn't smart enough to decipher the two. So let me be clear. Me saying that your baby. Okay, let's not, not let's not say that anymore. Hold on, but let me how just finish. Let me finish and then we can move on, because you you just raised a point where you put me and Monique in the same little bus. When I say that I feel, when I say that the rumor is that the kid could be his. And why do you that, keep even repeating that? Like, well, you, do you brought it do you, up. Who, does anyone have a kid in here? Do you have kids? I don't. Do you have kids? No. Okay, so then you I don't, don't understand either. why it's even inappropriate for you to keep repeating that. So let's just stop okay. talking about my child. So I understand that you that, that makes you uncomfortable. That, but I'm going to clarify yes. this last point since you but brought you it up. And I'm going to move on. It, okay, I'm going to clarify this last okay, point. Okay, let's clarify. If the the dig was if there was a dig, which I didn't intend to, so if you felt like it was a dig, I apologize. I don't think it's a dig. I think it's inappropriate. If you felt that like it was inappropriate, then I apologize. I appreciate the it. question though is more of a reference of who your baby daddy is, not this attack on the child. But we all know who that is. But during the when you got pregnant by Fetty Wap, it was a big conversation around whether or not it was his kid. You don't think that that was a conversation? I mean, there's conversations I didn't create about that, a lot of things. But you're a public figure. That wasn't a conversation I started. Um, I don't know. I actually don't think it was a big conversation around that time. I think other people who tried were, to make it a conversation. Uh, absolutely. Okay. People made it a thing when it wasn't. Um, but that's what I'm saying. I believed you. If you come out and say, this is my baby daddy, then I believed you. I didn't question <laughs> but it like, then. Let, let's, how stupid or dumb would it be for a grown ass woman to just ah, I pick you like it wasn't this wasn't like I mean he was oh, hot he was hot at the time that happens I mean and I was hot way before it, it that. happens it happens I was hot way yeah. before that so it was you, like you were hot but that, he was hot on the charts which is why he came and got me because that was the hottest thing he could get <laughs> Listen, okay, let's put on, let, let me just say that your, your kid is probably one of the most beautiful kids I appreciate it, thank out you. there. And we, yes. we do post your kid and say, what a beautiful baby. Everybody well, does. It's, it's a, she's the best thing I've ever made. Yeah, she's gorgeous. <laughs> Isn't it ironic, though, that her eyes are like the most beautiful thing? I think it's a blessing. Yeah. I think it's beautiful. Well, she has my dad's eyes and your Willie's grandfather. Blue, blue, green, hazel. They just change colors. Most of my dad's family has colored eyes. My sister does. I got my mom's eyes. Thanks, mom. <laughs> <laughs> but then I realized, you know, I'm so gorgeous that if I had green eyes, like the guys wouldn't even be, and the girls would just really hate me more. So I'm like, okay, God did the world a favor. But uh, <laughs> but no, I do think it's beautiful that she she has these just beautiful, gorgeous mm. eyes. And she's so sweet. So how's the how's the makeup line going? You started a makeup line. Yes. Are you yeah, wearing it? Yeah. Yes, I am. I'm wearing cashmere today. <laughs> it's Kari. Kari Barbie Kari Beauty. Barbie Beauty. Yes, okay. So her. does your daughter get a percentage of all the sales? She's 20% owner. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. And she okay. has a 5 to 9 college plan that a percentage goes to nice. every month. Nice. Mm -hmm. um, a business manager just, you know, it's already set up and everything. And she has her own accounts, of course. That's awesome. Um, so I'm going to teach her the business. I want her to work for herself mm -hmm. and always have something for herself. How but old is she? She's 19 months. She's 19 months. She is more Why fiscally responsible than she's I am. 19. She won. Okay, well, that no, the thing, right? <laughs> it's a mom thing, you know? Like, one, two, three. Men just say, like, a number. She's almost two, but no. not quite there. My 19, dog right. is 14 months. That's my baby. 
I guess you I could say too? like one and I a half. Because she's no, more think, than one. I think until they turn two, two, moms usually do like a month thing. Yeah. Just so, I don't know, it's a mom thing. So going back to Nikki. So <laughs> okay. when after she sent the gift uh, for your child mm-hmm. and what I thought was a peace offering, yeah. mm-hmm. did you fit? When did you then decide, fuck it, I'm about to go back over here? And I I'm never did. So after season three reunion, I thought she did some very distasteful things again. She after made, season three? Season three reunion. She just made general comments about how she's better than everybody. She attacked the audience, talked, attacked everybody on stage. And up until that point, I'm like, we were cool. Mm-hmm. So I just but really, see, she didn't attack you, though. Well, she didn't specifically single me what she, what she out. She but said, she said, I'm better than every single person here. No, what she I said, have more what, money than every single person here. She did Ain't nobody but money. me doing this. And I even... But she, well, she was like, making more money than everybody on the. On um, the she was making more money. Absolutely than not. How did the girl she was? Honey, my bag is ridiculous. Don't well, play. She was booked and busy. That, that and I season, stay booked and busy. No, but that season, a lot of y'all weren't as booked as her. That's what you think. <laughs> Here's the thing. Even though I was pregnant, my I had more checks coming in than. Okay. I, like I said, I had a lot of things behind the scenes, and okay. I have a lot of businesses and investments and stocks and bonds and things that I do that Mm -hmm. I don't talk about. Like Mm -hmm. I advertise what makes sense for Mm -hmm. my brand. Like my, my cosmetic line makes sense. Mm -hmm. I don't advertise half the things that I own because I don't want them to be hip hop companies. Right. You know, and I have other people, but you know, there's people making a thousand dollars an episode on the show. Yeah. And I ain't one of them. And and it ain't booked though too. Yeah. Which is very true. So I, I beg to differ. I don't think just because your parents already had money means that you're, you're doing better than people, mm-hmm. whatever. And even if that is your case or your idea, you still don't attack people. But you know, she always does her coke and her Molly at the reunion, so she's usually high Allegedly. and out of her mind. Oh no, please buy. She's asking if I wanted something to turn no. But anyway, um, well, I, why would somebody doing coke ask somebody that don't do coke for coke? No, she, I mean like no, no. I, people don't walk up to me on the street and say, "Bro, you got some coke?" I mean, <laughs> no, no, no. She me. didn't ask me for coke. Oh. I didn't, I'm, I'm not saying that she's asked me. For drugs, I'm saying like I know what she does because we like we we've talked about it. But I know for a fact there's several people but that enter the reunion, and I'm not just singling her out. There's several people that get on their all, drug binge. I sat at that reunion couch mm-hmm. sober as fuck my first season, and the ne- person next to me who I won't say, I thought that motherfucker was dead. And there was a point <laughs> where I was about to raise my hand and say, "Could we please call Play a back the tape? <laughs> Play back the tape." They were sitting well, directly next to me. Well, that's what were they seating wearing? a lot. <laughs> what were they wearing? What color was it? I'm not going to say what, what color was it. he was okay. wearing. <laughs> All right. But, um, <laughs> but there's, no, a, lot, there's, like a, we, there's we were, a lot going on yeah. backstage. So I, I, did, I didn't... Mm-hmm. I didn't like what she did at the reunion. However, I you know I just took it with a grain of salt. Mm-hmm. I figured that not no shade. I figured she was just high and being crazy. Mm-hmm. So we ended up being in the same circle a lot that summer because of people that we were hanging out that were friends. Mm-hmm. So we saw each other and it was just like you know what whatever <laughs> we're not filming it's all good. Mm-hmm. We it was it was fine. We took shots. We, we took hung out together with yes. Floyd at her on her birthday. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. And she yeah. So it was like it was nothing. Crazy, everything was cool. That's the puzzling part. You that, got, we and well, cool. here we go. Okay. So now I'm thinking, okay, we're cool. The hair, the the batchet, the batchet, the hatchet's been buried or whatever. Mm-hmm. Right. And then I'm minding my business and I go on Instagram and see three plastic disasters sitting together in a car. Who, who's the three plastic disasters? Um, Nikki, what's her face? Uh, Nasal he. And Holexes all sitting together. And it's just like, okay, so, wait a minute. Oh, so. These, these, the three musketeers, the three little mice, whatever. And it's like, okay, you're supposed to be my friend and you're leaving heart eyes under all my pictures and love you, sis, and love you this. And now you're sitting in the middle of a fraud sandwich looking is, like a really is, re- backwards Oreo. This is why I love so Jesus. So at that point, it's like, okay, and that's when you get back to the every man for himself. Nobody cares about loyalty. It's about, oh, th- what will get me camera time? Okay. And that was fake and fraud and genuine so, not genuine so let me say she should have called me and said hey i'm gonna do this for mm-hmm. the scene i would have had more respect then mm-hmm. but don't let me just be on ig after we just had a conversation and you're a whole fraud that mm-hmm. is what pissed me everything off. everything you just said i absolutely agree with and would say put me in your shoes mm-hmm. and no yeah put no put you in monice's shoes i don't know whose shoes but I looked at you as somebody like I don't fuck with a lot of people. I yeah. swear to God, I don't. I no, don't. that's true. And and you, I really liked. And so well, I thought we was cool. I then, think we had some really actually good moments, Jason. Yeah, no. And then I saw you clicked up with her. And for me, it's just like the whole thing where you know where we are right now, even with the team and just everybody. Like if it's not good energy or if the person's with the wrong people, like you see that. That's how mm. I think I felt. And mm. I felt like, because with the Moniz, what people didn't know, I didn't just pop up with a sex tape. Like, I don't have time for that. Like, I'm really out here making money. What happened was... She, it was a whole behind the scenes she, thing. You, and you know, because you tried to mediate I, Yeah, it. no, behind I actually scenes, tried to play... Tried to, 
referee, she, she, and it was a lot. So for mm-hmm. the audience, I, was, I was stressed. I was stressed. So for the audience who didn't see that, <laughs> she was attacking my staff at events and just doing things I thought was unprofessional. Mm-hmm. I, well, she was trying to protect herself. So I called her on the phone. I got her number, called her on the phone. I said, listen, I don't know you like that. I don't even film with you, but I'm letting you know we don't want to go there. She kept it up, kept it up, kept it up. Mm. So finally I was like, okay. And then you try to mediate it. Yeah. And that's again. But by the, I think by the time I jumped in, it was further it was already, along than I really knew. It was already but, up. But, the, but like at this point, I didn't know about the sex tape. And me and Monique talked every day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she hadn't even told me. Like she was trying to keep the whole thing private. So I think for any woman, automatically you're going to go into defense. Like you said, well, the first I interviewed Tank here on the show, and that show went crazy. Oh God, yeah. Yeah. What did you think? Did you did you hear it? I did. Did you? Did you, you, you find you, it funny? You I mean, I know she's you, your friend, you but watched did you that find show it funny? No, you I mean, let's, your ass no off. let's be honest. Tank is just funny anyway. That, but that part. I just don't understand, like, why are we talking about something that allegedly occurred 27 years ago? Shouldn't you be worried about your songs well, or your albums or maybe your wife? We, I don't know. We kind of led him down that road. He and was any, led. And any you know? anytime I interview somebody, you can lead a horse to the water, but you cannot make him drink. Anytime that, I no. interview somebody <laughs> and I know that somebody didn't burn fuck you in the grass, I'm going to ask about it. It was a good idea. It was interview. a good idea. So anyway, yeah. That sounds like some shit I would do, actually. Listen, Monique sounds very creative. I, if I That's want- why I fuck with the bitch, because she's my kind of fucking crazy. Like, how, no. I'm crazy, she's be- crazy. I think you better than that. But we're two completely mm-hmm. different types of crazy. So you guys have a radio we- show now, mm-hmm. Black had- Hollywood Live. Y'all still doing that? Well, no, we, it was never Black Hollywood Live that okay. we were doing. That was just that That was that the day. platform, okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, but um, we do have a little... Well, I was gonna say, <laughs> when are you two joining forces outside of Love and Hip Hop? Because you're both well, you're both singers. Yes. So why hasn't a single like dropped? Because what? I'm sorry. Well, we have a couple of projects that we're working on that you know I don't like to. I'm not one of those people that oh yeah I have this and this. I just like to drop bombs on people. So I like you know that. I work in silence like lasagna. You yeah. don't hear that G, but that G there. <laughs> so just, I've been very busy, and we actually do have something coming that will be very I think interesting. Okay, when? well like before Christmas. Or before Thanksgiving. Go to MasikaKalisha.com for all the updates. Oh, yeah. so, so, so just so I'm clear for my own sanity so mm-hmm. I can put this to bed. Okay. You and Moniz are real friends. Yes. Okay, that is your real friend. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Like, we're at each other's house. Our kids are good friends. They play together. Like, Moniz is actually a really good down-to-earth person. You said something that was really big. It's about the energy. When the energy's off, you don't fuck with it. Mm-hmm. I think something about this show fucks with everybody's energy. Mm-hmm. Like good or bad? Bad. Really? Negative. Yeah, it makes it, this for, show. No, no love and hip hop. Sorry, oh, not oh, this show. I'm saying you're the <laughs> sorry. first person I've ever heard <laughs> no, no, say that. Not this show. I'm sorry. <laughs> love and hip hop. Okay, yeah. mm-hmm. I, I, I agree with that. When I looked at you, I said it because you you're yeah, a cast yeah, yeah, member yeah, as yeah. well. Well, former. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're alumni, <laughs> yeah. whatever you want to call it. But it's like you know. Even it's a, it's such a great platform and it's such a great opportunity, but it causes all it these just drain you to yeah. come out of your. Cl- I was not in a happy place when I was filming, mm-hmm. and as much as I appreciate my job, I could definitely yeah, feel the season. Yeah, the second we wrapped, bitch, happy as a motherfucker. <laughs> I'm just doing cartwheels, flips, and woo. Like, okay, but I was, why, but why did you keep running from Alexis, honey? I would never run. No, but you was no, running. Why you never want to meet first, up with her? First of all, I did absolutely off camera. Oh, Why okay. do you entertain a stalker and give them what they want, which is attention? Okay, mm. but some and would say you asked for it because she was with Fetty when you got pregnant. You know, here's the thing, and I can say this now because he said it. <laughs> <laughs> well, she pregnant now, so y'all all gonna be at the playpen together. So why? Okay, so when I met Willie, child, I'm going to that baby shower because I when I met, well, you'll be the only one. When I met Willie, <laughs> is that Fetty? Yes. Okay. Um, he. You know, made sure to tell me he was a single. You look baby. very good, by the way. Well, thank you. Yeah, just anybody, go ahead. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, just an observation. Yeah. So I, I was not interested in dating him. I wanted to do a record with him. Mm-hmm. I told him that I wanted to pay him for a feature, and he laughed in my face. And I mm-hmm. asked him what was funny, and he was like, "I've never had a girl say they wanted to pay me." And I'm like, mm-hmm. "Well, that's what the fuck you do, right?" So he was like, "You know, I really respect that. I'll do the record." So I'm mm-hmm. like, "Don't just say that because we're in this club, and I'm cute." Mm-hmm. So he was like, "No, nah, I'm really gonna do it." So we exchanged information. He left and he went on my like SoundCloud and like listened to all my music and he was like, yo, I really like this, this is dope, whatever. So we just ended up like talking and then he ended up coming to my house and never left. So we did the record. We spent like the rest of his time here in LA together. Mm-hmm. Then he left, he came back. We spent more time together. Did you know if he had a girlfriend at the time or no? Well, here's the thing. I, again, I wasn't interested in dating him. Okay. That was what he was interested but in. But you weren't aware is what I'm saying. No, he didn't have a girlfriend. He okay. never did. Still to this day, nobody that claims they were his girlfriend was. From from his point of view, or because you know sometimes women no. fall in love with men and believe they're in a relationship. Well, let me explain to you this. Okay. 
So he did ask me if we could be in a relationship. I told him like, you know, we can just take things slow. Mm-hmm. Um, so I asked him if he had a girlfriend. He said, no. Mm-hmm. I said, do you have any girls that think that you're a girlfriend? That, that's said, always no. my second question. I said, that's a lie. I mm-hmm. said, because there's some bitch out here mm-hmm. that's like, that's my man. Oh, no, I ain't no woman I ever put in that position mm-hmm. on that pedestal and ain't nobody and da 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 So he ended up like putting us on Snapchat or something and then it just went crazy and then that's when all the crazy psycho people started like popping out with all their crazy stories mm-hmm. and we were skydiving and we thought it was funny mm-hmm. and then you know we still continued and went to all his shows and whatever else blah 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 what mm-hmm. have you um, I found out much later down the line after I did my investigation that he had a girl with him the day I met him mm. a whole nother girl Okay, and she was actually out here with him mm-hmm. and uh, apparently he flew her home to spend the rest of the time with me Wow. Then I found out a couple months after I got pregnant that there was another girl that was also pregnant while I was pregnant. Damn. Wow. Then there was wow. another girl that was pregnant shortly after I had my child. So is he a sex addict or is this just a man? I Listen, I don't answer questions for a man. I don't speak for him. Mm. I'm just saying. So when we met, he did ask me to be his girlfriend. There was a girl that got pregnant right around the time I was pregnant. Mm-hmm. And there was a girl that was with him when I met him that I didn't know about. So that's Jeez. three whole women. Mm. So he... You, what, where did you fall in? And you still had sex with him? I didn't know any of this till much, oh, later. much okay, later. Okay. Listen, I'm the FBI, okay? So mm-hmm. after all this crazy allegations started coming out, mm-hmm. I pulled out my investigation and started like going through shit with a fine tooth and all his DMs because I had his password. Is that an engagement <laughs> ring? No, oh. no, no, no. Okay. So this is the ring that I got myself and I feel like um, it's three carats. So any man that is intimidated by it will keep walking. Any man that can do better will make an offer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're with Fetty, and She's then comedy. what? And then so what happens? Comedy. So me and Fetty actually broke up before I even found out I was pregnant. I was pregnant, but I had no idea that I was pregnant. Okay. And one thing I will say about him is he is very persistent, mm-hmm. and um, I was not interested in getting pregnant, and it was something that he was seemed to be trying to do a lot. Uh, <laughs> because he was having unprotected sex. Well, it's not just that. I'm a grown ass woman. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm very big on safe sex, very big on condoms and all mm-hmm. that. I, you know, everybody's had situations or scares. And it's one thing where you have an accident. It's another thing where you do the shit over and over on purpose. Mm-hmm. And then it becomes like, okay, what this is what your goal is. Mm-hmm. That's not what I'm on or whatever. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we ended up breaking up for other reasons. Mm-hmm. And I went off to Houston. I was like recording my EP and he was, you know, whatever. We would still talk here and there, but it was just like not a thing. That's where the whole online fighting was happening. He no. said y'all weren't together. No, okay. no, that, so that, was, that was before that. Okay. So I actually was g- going to get a breast reduction and I found out in my pre-op surgery that I was pregnant pretty mm. much. So basically, you know, they do all your blood work and um, they, was, they said my pregnancy test came back indiscriminate. I was like, what the fuck does that mean? Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, don't worry about it. I've only seen once in my whole history of practice that it was she was actually pregnant and mm-hmm. I guess I was twice yeah so <laughs> that's how I found out I was pregnant and at that time like we weren't really on the same page so you know I told him and he was just like okay and he was like well what do you want to do I was like fuck you mean but he asked you to have an abortion absolutely not who made that up that's what they like, yeah I'm, like I just it's so we, it's, it's just really the story clearing, clearing the that air. people just mm-hmm. take and grab why do you think people are so excited about creating lies on you well here's the him. thing right um you do have people that say things over and over and over for attention and you have people that don't want it. Okay. And then try to make that a reality. Yes, I guess if I said 365 times, I was his girlfriend, I was his girlfriend. No, I really was his girlfriend. No, he didn't. He made her this. He, no, no, no. Maybe people might believe it, but Mm -hmm. I don't say anything. Mm -hmm. I've never been a public relationship type person. Mm -hmm. I always live my private life publicly, if that Mm -hmm. makes sense. I'm Mm -hmm. never like, trying to say, you know, who my boyfriend is or who this or that. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. we still have a normal relationship. Right. I've dated very public men that no one knows. We yeah. still go... Like who? Well, <laughs> you know something. Don't play, Jason. So, uh, <laughs> you know. But, um, like, we'll go out and do all these public things, but we're not trying to make a spectacle. Right. We're not posting a million pictures. Mm-hmm. So it's like, people feel like, oh, if you don't post it, it's not real. Right. But, but this person said this, so that has to be true. Yeah. And I don't really give a flying fuck about somebody else's opinion or what story they want to make because mm-hmm. you're talking about me to get attention. So, so where in all that is Alexis? When did you find out about that girl? Well, I'm actually, the next time I'm doing charity is for Thanksgiving. <laughs> I will be um, feeding the homeless mm-hmm. and the less fortunate. I don't do free charity anymore, so I will not be talking about bums without a purpose. Okay. But <laughs> If you want to see me doing charity, um, you can go to mystikagalicia.com. But don't you think you can show her a little love now since charity. your kids are going to be related? First of all, my child is not related to any devils, demons, spirits, or but demonic that's still forces. Fetty's baby, right? <laughs> well, Has anyway. He, have you and Fetty had the conversation like, look, she's coming? 
Or he's good. Um, it's a girl. It's She's a girl. Coming. Our conversations have nothing to do with any stalkers, bums, but or. You're not going to walk around. We actually in- do a lot of great charity work that you should see. Like, we. <laughs> it's really good. But, you know, this is not one of our charitable cases. So, again, um, the next time you can see me talking about charity will be on Thanksgiving. So, okay, well, let's So, let's, wait, wait, wait. So, one of the scenes where you were running away from conversation. First about of all, it. I've never ran, but my back does get good camera time. For me, I don't give a shit <laughs> if I'm in the scene for one minute or one hour. I'm you still, still going to get the same oh, I know. check. I got paid and too. no matter what, it. my check is still bigger than the so people that you, are trying to get so attention. So, when off you of were me. leaving that scene and the whole dirty feet thing happened, did you feel. What, what, did you know what was happening at the time? Because you really don't know what the. Well, first of all, shooting. I was wearing $2,000 Rene Cavaliers. And if okay. you can't pull, pronounce, or purchase what I'm wearing, you don't have. You cannot talk about it. Now, there was nothing dirty. We oh, all you're know. About me? No, I'm, I'm talking about Lizel. Lizel. Oh, Lizel. Oh. Lizel. Oh. Lizel. Oh. Lizel dog. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Um, so, okay. yeah, he can't pull, pronounce, or purchase what I had on. So, therefore, your opinion does not count. Mm-hmm. Now, dirty would mean unclean. If you brush your foot on something, it's a spot. So It was so the before, same wait. exact spot on my ankle as my shoe, which came from something dirty. So I probably brushed up his, on getting his dirty ass. Wait, I don't before fuck, before I don't you explain, so me and, Ke- <laughs> me and Keisha, Keisha hits me up on the three-way, and she says, you want to meet up today? And I'm like, this is Keisha Cole. Oh, the day I ran into you at the yeah, W. I'm like, Keisha Cole, of mm-hmm. course I want to meet up with you. I love you. You know, I'm from Stockton, you're from Oakland. So I meet up with her, and we walk in, and you know, we're... In the cut at the W in the I'm back bar. I'm sitting down there looking. And she's sitting like, there. Oh, I have good. no makeup. But you look really good. On. I was doing some work on my computer. Don't, you don't need makeup on it. But she so. looked good. So me and Keisha <laughs> sitting there. Keisha had a couple glasses of red wine. And she said, girl, the feet. What happened? But you were really open and talking <laughs> no, about it. So, and But she even said the same thing. Like, mm-hmm. have you sometimes when you're driving your heels and mm-hmm. you have your foot down, you have like a, a spot from your carpet or whatever. You better tell the truth if you have some dirty feet before. You need to go uh, get your carpet clean. No, first of all, <laughs> I have a $120,000 Mercedes, okay? And the thing stays clean. It has nothing to do, like, have you ever had a blue stain on your white shoe from your blue jeans? Yeah. Okay, so it has nothing to do with anything like that. First of all, those shoes are bomb. They're amazing. They're gorgeous. So where still wear them, still the love shoes, them. though? It was on my heel and on the shoe, and it was from doing this. Sh- <laughs> Yeah. Well, well, did you do a review of that scene? Actually, yes, I he did. You no, did. You didn't. No, no. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, no. Everybody Zero in your comments was getting uh, on you about not yeah. doing a review. No, but honestly, I just think it's super corny. Like it's extremely corny for somebody that sweats like a pig in every scene, and you wear a cut up H and M white shirt that's too small with some cut off Adidas pants because you cannot find the hefty bag that the rest of your stuff is in because Joe threw it out the back door. I think it's very distasteful for somebody that wears thirty five fake chains oh, and Vernacci yeah. and rhinestone shoes with the rhinestones falling off when I really have swartzy crystals on my shit. You cannot talk every time I've asked you to pull me something. The only thing you pulled through was Fashion Nova. Okay, so and let's not talk bad about Fashion Nova because they give you that bag. But when I'm asking you for fashions <laughs> mm-hmm. and like for my birthday party, I right. asked him to dress me. Mm-hmm. He couldn't get me anything. I ended up spending well, six grand on right. Doja Gabbana head to toe because he couldn't. So you got a heel on now that's covered. I can't see your feet. So I can't verify that. But it's well, not. But you if don't you would have... like to massage my feet, I will take I'll these shoes off. Feet. Of course. You rub her feet. <laughs> Actually, the funniest <laughs> thing. That's the funny I... thing. The first date me and Willie ever had, he rubbed my feet. He was so sweet. Oh. Okay. So, that's very so romantic. Now, now that that... Um, <laughs> Because season one bitch is following him around and the dirty feet thing is following you around. He came Actually, out. Actually, it doesn't follow me. He came out with a single. Um, well, it must be really single because I never heard it. <laughs> so sad. Were you and Zell ever friends? Like at one point? like Oh, absolutely. Cool. We were frenemies. We were definitely, apparently. And I, I'm not going to call him my friend because it's like you have people that stick around long enough to figure out how to use you. Mm. And that's what he did. Um, okay. But no, I really liked him as a person. Mm-hmm. I felt like, you know, he was just trying to make it and I was helping him and whatever. Like he slept on my couch before. And mm-hmm. like, I just, you know, he was new to LA and yeah. I and I knew a lot of people and I could kind of help him get in his thing. Mm-hmm. So like we have had a lot of conversations. We used to spend all the time together. Mm-hmm. So it was like, I literally go to sleep and I wake up and you're a snake. Right. So but do, like, do you feel like you should go back to love and hip hop if you're going to keep deciding what scenes you stay in though? Because that really frustrated me. I, I, let me I'm tell you something. Wait, wait, let me I feel like you're crafty enough to handle yourself in any environment because the way you took down Hazel was, it was literally. It, no, it, no, I mean, no. seriously. No, but hold on, hold on. That's what I'm, my point is, is that last season, if I remember, Hazel came like towards the end and then at well, the reunion. Well, she got one episode because I gave it to her. And then and then a reunion. Well, <laughs> this is the thing I can't keep get to. When you say you give it to her, you ain't moaning me entertainment. No, no, no. I was called and asked if I was willing to do it. And you it. said, okay. And I said, throw the dog a bone. So when Hazel, 
when Hazel got to the reunion, <laughs> I had I had left the reunion by then because I was over. It was yeah. too much. But you and her were on the stage, and then you got off and left, and we're sitting in the audience. And then this season, you've left a few times. Do you feel like? Because I feel like you can handle anything you're put in. I can, and also do what I want to. So why not stay in? Well, here's the thing. I don't give attention to... Like, at that point, she was off the show, right? And who, she who was... Alexis was? Ho, Hosel, or Nozel, ha, ha, Hazel, or okay. Nostradamus. Nosey knows. I Big Mills, whatever. She was off the show, and she you, had... Wait, I need to know this. Do what? you sit in your house <laughs> with a flip chart and markers? No, it's, and, it's and, fresh and, off and the top put, of my head. And put pictures of people up and say, here's all the <laughs> fucking names I'm going to give this person. Listen, I, if I tried to think of something, I could not. I am not funny on purpose. Like, if, like I say, if I had to do a stand-up comedy, it would be Nostradamus. Come on now. Well, you, you, I don't even know how clever. I came up with that. I don't even. It's just very. My clever. mind is just crazy. Okay, so young, well, young something's man. wrong with me. Where did, where did young man come from? <laughs> Have you seen that? Listen, Please? we're not gonna do that because she gets, <laughs> she gets bashed every time on the show. It's so sad. I feel sorry for the girl. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, so when you out so loud. when that she came loud. on the reunion and then then this season with the whole did, <laughs> yes. did you just say if, if production knew you didn't want to shoot with Alexis but they kept throwing you in the scene why not just stay and say fuck it you want it and give it to her. Because I'm giving you what you want. Again, you do not give a stalker attention. You give a stalker a restraining order. You put them in a straight jacket and give them purple pills and a padded wall. You don't give a crazy person a platform to continue to be crazy. Again, I get the job and I do my job very well, but my family is off limits. My sanity is off limits. So when I see you at the bowling alley and no cameras and I chase you out of the bowling alley, don't try to act I like you're about, about that, that life. Mm. And then the next day when you beg for the scene, you come up to me. But even at that, it's like all the shit you talk when you see me. So do you, so do you- It's like you're a fan and I understand, but you know, today is not the day I'm signing autographs mm -hmm. and tomorrow and the next day is not looking good for you either. <laughs> so do you just, you just refuse to accept that she's going to be your daughter's? Um, honey, there's no relation to my child. Honey, that's so a mystery you, of modern day science. Will you let her and daughter and your daughter play together? First of all, listen, there's about 35 people that need to be DNA tested. Once that process has done, <laughs> then come back and holler at me. But at the oh, end of God. the day, again, to answer your <laughs> former question, um, why didn't I shoot with Hazel or, or, and Alexis. or, or Stalker Wop? Um, so again, like I said, Hazel wasn't on the show. She was trying to get on the show. She had actually called Moniz, who she swears she hates. Mm -hmm. You're talking about last season. Last now. season. Okay. Three. Mm -hmm. yeah. A million times trying to figure out how to get back on the show. Mm -hmm. She presented that fake ass trash ass song with Petty Bop that she had trying to say it was Fetty. They didn't care. She wasn't on the show. So it wasn't until I tweeted her that she got attention and I got a phone call saying, we might want to film this. Would you be willing to do this? So I was like, if it's a one-off thing, I don't really care. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to bring her back. Mm -hmm. So at that, it's like, if I entertain her at the reunion, well, that gives her life for the next season. So I was like, I gave you your bone. Now you want another one, you fucking apologize for what you said about my child. She didn't want to do it, so mm -hmm. I'm not going to fucking give you that attention. And what she the said, only reason she what, got back on the show was because of me. And what she has said about your child was it wasn't Fetty. It's the same as you're saying with Alexis. Yeah, well, again, like I said, that wasn't her nose, her ass, her lips, her hair, her life, or anything. So it's like, she should know it's false, and she should know that it's very false to talk about my child. So okay. I wouldn't see somebody like you dating Tory Lanez. Was that just like a rumor? Oh, no, we're great friends. But we, you dated, though. No, we're great friends. Did we hang out around? all the time. Any mess around? No. No. We're, mm -hmm. we're, we're great friends. We talk all the time. I was talking to him earlier today. Um, we hang out a lot. He's just a cool person. So you and Hazel, you're not friends and Honey, we'll never it, be friends. Who is friends with Hazel? So when you she got- She came against the whole community. I mean, I mean. I mean, well, no I mean, unless you want to be her friend in hell. No, no, no. apparently- No, my, my friend, are uh, very far and few uh, yeah. and I don't throw that word around my floor my friends are I literally only have like 10 friends maybe mm. yeah and that's that. that's perfect I mean let's be honest not to take away from it I've been on this show for three years and been on the platform for four yeah I, like I said it's a great opportunity it's a great oh, it's stepping great. stone it's a great stage yeah. but this is not coming to America we are not like on the big screen oh I've made it I've arrived mm -hmm. you do have those bobblehead people that really feel like that this is just I'm better than you and I'm bigger than everybody and I'm this I'm Hazel Lee baby I'm this I'm that we're all on the same fucking show you're mm -hmm. not better than anybody mm -hmm. if anything you're probably the bottom of the barrel it's like so you're the lowest on this totem pole before already yeah. and you're acting like the you're acting like you're Beyonce and you just need to relax because we're all here trying to go here you're acting like you're already here so I had so heard I bring had, that back I had, I had heard that production of season one put that prostitution or that um that uh that email no no oh. no they put the mug shot of you 
on a billboard production did yeah. then said Nikki did it Nikki ends up the Nikki didn't tell me that this is just the work because this because you know coming in I'm like she gave me a lot of good advice but mm-hmm. I started calling people but production put a billboard up mm-hmm. Nikki goes to a scene where there doesn't even know like isn't aware and gets punched in the face by you mm-hmm. Did you feel? Do you did you feel that? That's a lie. Well, okay, tell okay, me because I don't because no. I never asked aware. you this, so I don't know. She was aware. Okay. So basically, um, I got a call <laughs> from somebody thinking it was a great idea mm-hmm. to make a fake billboard mm-hmm. of my mugshot into because I actually had a real billboard. Somebody on a, called you and said, "What do you think about putting your mugshot no, on a billboard?" No, no, no. Okay, so I had a real billboard on Sunset Boulevard okay, in San okay, Vicente, okay, okay, prime mm-hmm. time. It was me in the Ace of Diamonds okay, shot okay, in the yeah. bath, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. So it was really on Sunset Boulevard for like a whole year. Mm -hmm. And we filmed that, but I guess in real life, that did make her feel a certain type of way. Why? I don't know. I really don't care. I don't know whose idea it was. I have an idea, but I can't prove it. The word on the street is production. I was told that it was Nikki's idea. Mm -hmm. I told that, I was also told that the producers paid for it. I don't know what's true and what's not, but Nikki was aware, production was aware that there was a fake billboard made of my mugshot from when I was like 19. What was, and the, what was the arrest for? I don't know which one because I've been arrested twice. But here's the thing. They picked the worst one and they could have picked the other <laughs> one because the other one, my eyebrows were so amazing. My mugshot was so beat. But this one, it was, I was still cute. But um, I think this was when I got arrested for domestic violence. I've been arrested twice. One okay. was for theft and one was for domestic violence. Okay. But Hazel also said she made some fake reports that you were arrested for prostitution. prostitution. Yeah, she said I was arrested for prostitution and served in an all males prison. I think that's where she served before her sex change. Right. Wait, um, she said you served in all Well, male the prison that she She's, put was yeah. an all males prison. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing, my my followers, they don't play. Team Mystique could come for you really quick. Yes, they, they do. They Googled the fuck out of that shit. Yes. And it was a it's a female's prison, but when at the time it was a all it was a all males prison, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. At the time. And then they converted it. Like they closed mm-hmm. it down and, and changed it. Mm-hmm. So yeah. the year she said I was arrested, first of all I was a minor, second of all I was in high school. Mm-hmm. Third of all, she put like all this these aliases and these names and these charges and then her math was off like she said I served 11 months or 12 months or whatever but then when you look at it it was like 14 months or 15 months when you added it up like I mean she's not were that you in there right. for 14 months I don't know because I don't remember Wait, were you apparently in there that I was long? there you were in I've never served a prison <laughs> okay. sentence, sentence. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I've never been arrested for prostitution I've never been like it's Dang. just it's just asinine and the fact that you have that much free time to mm. copy and paste and make but let's be honest Arrest are public records. You can yeah, go you and can look up it. anybody's arrest so, history. Like I have all forty-seven pages of her boy toy girlfriend boyfriend's rap sheet. I looked it up. Who? Okay. Rosie Rose Posey, Pinky Stinky, oh. whatever. Okay, so but wait, what about the email that was apparently exchanged between the two of you, where she tells you that she's got herpes? Oh no, she didn't tell me that. <laughs> no, so so that, her yeah, that, her I former assistant that. or whoever it was, you know, never got paid because. <laughs> Oh, she's going to pay him hopes and dreams. Mm-hmm. Um, but he <laughs> sent her this show email. Is so messy. And I swear every morning I wake up and I say, God, just use me. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's using you. All right. <laughs> she sent or, or he, I don't know. They sent mm-hmm. an anonymous email to everybody mm-hmm. and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And I even told that person, like, I don't know who you are. And I don't like the fact that you're fucking contacting me. So I've had this stuff for years, mm-hmm. but I don't understand why she even tries to come for me. Like, cause at one point we were, I wouldn't say friends, but we were cordial with each Mm -hmm. other. And I have so many of her text messages trying to figure out how to finagle this guy and that guy and talk, you know, when guys just are you one of those people that save every text and every phone that you've ever had and receive. Okay, so was I have oh I have so much that can just I could take a motherfucker out in one Wait, screenshot. Wait, so back to the, but the but let's okay. close the billboard. So, yeah, so, yeah. so the billboard situation. Okay. Yes. So I got a call them asking me if I was filming. I said, absolutely not. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's ridiculous. Take it down. I'm not doing it. So I got a call like three days in a row. By the third day, I was like, Masika, you know, the longer you wait, the longer this shit's up. I'm like, oh, you actually put the shit up? The shit's already up? Oh, so mm. you didn't even know didn't that know. it was up. I thought it was an idea. I didn't know it was a real thing. So I, so you know. So now you're pissed. I was already pissed. I was mm-hmm. like, fuck it. Let's just do get over. Let's get the shit over with. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I thought that they had put up a billboard prop in some little back alley somewhere. It's mm-hmm. really up. I pull up to the fucking scene and it's a billboard <laughs> right outside of the boom, boom room <laughs> in Burbank where Jesus himself records. Wow. Beyonce, Jay-Z, everybody. Wow. And you mean to tell me I know exactly where you that put is. this shit up for three days. <laughs> so when I walked up to the scene, Ooh, I, I blacked out hot. Yeah, and it was just like, Oh, and then there's people under it taking goddamn pictures. And the shit's not even if, real. If you would have got out that car, I'd have took a selfie with your ass in that billboard. <laughs> so I you know, we have our we have our 
speaking points. Mm-hmm. You know, we get our you yeah. know general idea of what's supposed yeah. to happen for the day. Mm-hmm. And I told everybody, I'm not following any of my scene directions today. Right. They're like, well, what are you going to do, Masika? I was like, I might punch her in the nose. They're like, well, don't punch her in the nose. I was like, okay. So I just punched her in the eye because mm-hmm. I didn't lie. I didn't punch her in the nose. They right. told me, don't mm-hmm. put her in the nose. Yeah. But it's like, for me, there's certain things that like the part of Chicago I come from does not allow certain things to happen. Mm-hmm. And that was, that crossed the line. If it had been in a warehouse somewhere or to fake or some whatever, mm-hmm. maybe it would have been a different reaction, but I'm too crazy for that. I'm, I'm crazy. So when, and you go put me in here without a straight jacket. Well, I, I, you're not crazy. <laughs> I'm calculated crazy. You're calculated crazy. Moniz is crazy. She's calculated crazy too. So, um, <laughs> what did you think about that whole intervention with, um, Tierra Marie on the show. I think it was just really awesome that a bunch of drug heads, coke heads, and drug addicts and crack heads and alcoholics were telling somebody else that she needed rehab. I thought that was classic. Um, I do think... Tierra was here last week and said that production was giving her alcohol in the car while she was waiting for that scene. I'm pretty Mm. sure they did. Crazy. I'm surprised they didn't put her on an alcohol billboard and, like, make her sell it. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, but... um, I think that she definitely needed rehab, but yeah. I think the people, half the people telling her she needed it, needed to do. Mm-hmm. So like, this is what I keep saying. There's a certain decorum and integrity that you should have, even in reality TV. Mm-hmm. You can't just do everything for a scene. So it's like coming up to a scene, you, well, we're going to do an intervention for Tierra. Okay, great. Let's do it. Let's embarrass her. And see, and that, but that goes back to why I think I originally liked you. Cause I really feel like, you know how it is on that show. Let and that's why you. I walk off so fucking I, much. Well, Everything's I, not for sale. You know yeah. what I want? You know why I really love your recaps, Kendall? Mm-hmm. Because when you, you get it, <laughs> like you get it yeah. and you ain't even in the show. And I'd be like, somebody feeding him notes. Cause right. he knows. Some of this shit, I'd be like, wait a minute. So we going to go scuba diving? We don't know how to swim. <laughs> but you got people that will just jump in the damn water. Because it's drown. like, well, I get in the scene. Like, you just, not everything's not for free. Yes, <laughs> Tierra needed to go to rehab. Yeah. But as friends, real friends, that intervention should have happened privately, mm-hmm. off camera. Because, like, that's just, yes, so, it, it, a good thing came out of it. So Moni seemed to be kind of, you know, if I'm wrong, correct me, but leading the charge on, you know, posing the intervention. Do you think that... Moni, from what I do, like me and Moni, you know me, and, me and Moni and that. Big Nia, when we were fake friends, Who? Big Nia. Why are you calling her Big Nia? She's big. She's pretty big. Anyway, Nia so... Riley, yeah. Wait. You don't like her? her? Nia House. Her last name is House. <laughs> Why don't you like Nia? I thought y'all her, her last name is not Riley's house. How do you not? Li- why do you not like Nia? I don't like Nia House because she's fake, and that's about it. She just did some really fake. Wait, shit. when did this happen? Um, she was ta- <laughs> when I <laughs> when I invited her to Vegas, and she just did some really whack shit behind my back about like with some niggas that are just like the homies. Mm. But she was just talking shit about me to them as if they weren't going to tell me, and still smiling in my face. But like. You know, men are messier than women, honey, because when they they sent them damn screenshots, <laughs> so I was like, wait a minute, you're. I was having a conversation with her while she was talking shit about me so to the person Nia, that I was with. Why was Nia on the show this season if she didn't have no man? I mean, if she if she didn't have. Uh, That's a question for production, honey. Okay, no, but her no. and Fizz, because I remember at the reunion, you know, they looked a little close. You know, I don't remember things that are insignificant. <laughs> I don't really know. Okay, so... Okay, uh, well, back to Moniz being a part of the intervention. <laughs> yes. Do you feel so like... We actually had real-life mm-hmm. conversations, mm-hmm. me, Nia, mm-hmm. and Moniz, mm-hmm. about Tierra's drinking problem mm-hmm. privately. Mm-hmm. And, like, it... Because it, it had gotten really out of hand, and there's, mm-hmm. you know, things that occurred. Were you and Tierra friends? Yeah. You're, are you friends now? No. No? Mm-mm. Mm. Um, but that was her Who choice. Who are you cool with? Just Moniz? <laughs> but is Moniz, that- Ray, no. Bridget, um... Me and, Brooke, you, me and you are going to go to... Uh, we'll do four seasons. Me, you. You know I love a good. Four me, seasons. you, Kendall, Melissa, and Nikki, uh, baby. Now, Nikki, uh, but let me uh, tell, but let me tell you why. Let me tell I you. don't really want melted Wait, plastic this, at the table with me. Let me say this. I really don't. Well, you got a fake ass friend, so you had you used to plastic anyway. Here's the deal. If you, I mean, I do have plastic. No, nah, but it's all movies, good. Listen, but that, that's like, I mean, plastic personality. That's okay, like, that's like that's like that's like saying Hazel, like Hazel having an opinion about black women, a negative opinion about black women. She's a black woman. Just she's been light skin for three years. Let's be honest. <laughs> So here's what I'm asking. Know. Here's what I'm asking. What what is it going to take for you and Nikki to be cool again? Because you guys did get to a good it's place. It's just about admitting what you did. You cannot play victim when you know exactly what you've done. It doesn't matter enough for me to be angry. I'm so freaking happy at this place in my life. Like I'm at a great, great stage and, it's, and you can't take me off of that. So me, it's not even me being mad mm-hmm. at somebody. It's me not fucking caring. Mm-hmm. And it's like every chance I, every time I look up, they're talking about me. Now, Nikki doesn't really do it yeah, as Nikki much because Nikki she doesn't. actually has things going on in she's her life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But like you, 
every interview I've ever seen in passing, scrolling my timeline, trying to avoid, I hear my name. And it's like a not broken from fucking Nikki, record. Though. No, I'm not talking about Nikki. Yeah, I'm, but I'm, only, like, I'm only talking about her because honestly, oh. the only two girls on the show I really fuck. Well, that, I mean, I like Tierra now. I mean, I like yeah. the sober Tierra because, yeah. you know, yeah. again, you just never know who you're going to get on the show, who's going to click up. So you, yeah. I feel like you were, what, if, if I set up a brunch and pay for it, can mm -hmm. we all go to brunch? This is a brunch. Here's, here's my thing, right? I don't really care about having a conversation. Mm -hmm. I don't want to know what you feel. I don't care. It's about being an adult and admitting, you know what, Masika, that was fucked up. I shouldn't have did that. Okay. And you're big enough to do the same. Absolutely. Okay. But, but for me, I didn't do anything fucked up. I decided yeah, to react. Yeah, because when you hang out with a girl, like for example, me mm -hmm. and Claudia Jordan used to be really close. Yes. And then she did some shit that I thought was really shady. And it was an all out just arsenal of war right mm -hmm. so it was like everything i had ever known everything i had ever felt i just put it out and it was like really bad mm. i got kicked off twitter <laughs> <laughs> got put in twitter jail so my, my but what i learned in that was you know like if me and melissa are friends and we're really friends mm -hmm. and we fall out and decide not to be friends mm -hmm. it's not fair for me to go out now and use everything and that, i've ever exactly. known exactly because if i feel exactly. like because melissa won't give the pussy up the way i think she should because God blessed her with the ability to come up in the world. She ain't taking it that way. <laughs> but I say if she was fucking niggas and I knew about it and then I'm cool with it while she's fucking them and then we fall out and I'd be like, you fuck this one, this one, this one, this one. It's almost like when I see you and Nikki having your thing and then you like, oh, well, you was with this one and this one, this one. But that's never, how, that's never how it happened. Like, mm -hmm. the thing people don't understand, I have so much dirt in this little phone. Like, I <laughs> said. I could just grand open and can grand I buy, close it. Can I buy it from you? Listen, everything on the point. <laughs> but um, I don't just do that. It's when you come for me and say these things and try to make me out to be this person that you really are. Mm -hmm. That's when I might drop a receipt or two. And it's always a warning shot. Mm -hmm. It's never like, oh, I'm going to say everything I know. No, I'm going to say enough to let you know, bitch, to keep playing. I'm the mm -hmm. right one to play with. Like mm -hmm. I but said, is, I'm, is, the, I'm the right type of crazy. So is that Masika Kalija the reality star or Masika for real? Because I don't think. I mean, Southside are you, are, Chicago. But are, yeah. you, but are you reading all day long? No. Okay. I mean, I do it when it's appropriate and when it's right. necessary or when I'm transit or hair Because like, we had Cardi B here and I was like, bitch, when, I when like does this Cardi, turn I like Cardi. Cardi. Hey, little bitch. I love that girl. <laughs> so you're at the reunion. Yes. Zell goes to give Ray a hug because he, he just feels like they could be a best friends. And then all of a sudden, Ray gets beat down. Now, I'm not going to put you in the same position I put Ray in because I didn't give a fuck if he got fired. I just said it. Asked him a question. I knew he wasn't. He didn't know his contract. <laughs> he said everything. I'm like, ooh. He yeah, I'm playing them type of games. Now, you're season, so you're season four, bitch. <laughs> season four, b -Hodge. Okay, so when, when that fight <laughs> goes down, we've seen it now. Yeah. Did you? What did you feel? Um, disgusted. Mm -hmm. So when he walked over, I just throw my eyes and turned my head. I didn't know what he was going to do. Because you I, were sitting down here or you were on the stage? Well, I was on the stage pretty much the whole time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know. But um, <laughs> I didn't know what he was going to do. I thought he was going to like try to be funny or do something silly. I didn't think it would be you Were you that. sitting by Ray on Ray's couch in the I front, I was sitting right? on the couch that Ray was on, but on I was right. You were yeah, the first. Okay. But I was right next to um, Nina. So yeah. I turned my head and by, by the time when I turned back, he had already punched him. And mm -hmm. It was like I saw him walking up with his hands out, and the next thing, like he would, he really like railed on him, kicked him. Mm -hmm. He had like claws, wow. on, like, and he was wearing those cheap rhinestone shoes with the rhinestones falling off, mm -hmm. with like a hard toe boot or whatever. So it's like, no, who does that? Mm -hmm. Like even a sucker punch would have been better. Did you feel it was? He would, at least he wouldn't have seen you acted like you were trying to hug at somebody and then punch yeah. them for no reason other than attention. You cannot be that thirsty for attention that you'll just do anything. Did you feel that? Um, did you feel that it was too much even for loving hip hop? Yeah, mm -hmm. but I mean that wasn't like the, the type of person he is. He would slap his mom if he would get five dollars for it. Mm. Like there's certain people that just have no. Well, integrity. He, you know, one thing about him, he is honest. He said here. Mm. When oh, hey, Tori just texted me speaking of hey, buddy. Oh, Tori, you said he you doesn't talking. like me. What did you do to Hilarious. him? Hilarious. No, because I was interviewing. <laughs> I interviewed, um, who did I interview here? Oh, uh, I interviewed Eric Bellinger. Mm -hmm. And I said, there's a lot of people that compare you to Tori Lanes. I said, but I don't know <laughs> if his feet would touch the ground if he sat here. Well, if he stands on his wallet, he probably would. <laughs> yeah, because he is he's he's doing a damn thing. Yeah, he's doing really good. Okay, so well, we, we were talking about Ray, right? Oh, yeah. Zell. No, Zell was yeah. here, and Zell said because I said, "Were you in love with Joe? Like, what was that?" And he said, "Well, I just used him to the point to where I was gonna have to go if I called my mom, and she told me I would have to fuck him, so I did to stay here." Wow. <laughs> No, said, I mean, I, I mean, wasn't, I wasn't here for oh, that interview. I was mad that I missed it. Watching it, but like yeah. I said, like well, I mean, you, you, there's people that will do any and everything, mm. stab you in the back, the but front, the left, and the right. But whose fault is that? His or Mona's? Because Mona got the keys. 
does can Mona force you to to drag words what, out of you your mouth? don't think that love and hip hop creates that environment into which you think it, I, I mean, it, it, when it people think it love and hip hop like, they think uh, combat but here's, here's what I'm so know, tired how, of. Yeah. I'm really tired of everybody blaming Mona for everything. Right. Mona has a job to do just like we do. Uh-huh. She, whether said, you, she said that. Yes. Whether you like her decisions or mm-hmm. you don't like them, you're a whole grown ass adult. Mm-hmm. So I've I've done scenes or said things that I really didn't love. Mm-hmm. But then there's also things I'm like, fuck, I'm not fucking doing it. And I don't give a shit. I'm right. not doing it. That's yeah. not for sale. You can't have it. Mm-hmm. So let's stop blaming Mona. She's not the person that should be in the hot seat. There's a lot of people that make decisions. She's just the face of that. Right. I'll, so if, I'll so say if anything, in all fairness, whatever I told Mona or yeah. Stephanie, what I wasn't going to do, I did not have to do. Right. But that, e- yeah. equally, you know, like you said, you have a $120,000 car. That means you're not sleeping on the street and you're only sleeping out of a hefty bag. He admitted living in a hotel, mm-hmm. shooting this show. So when you don't have none, well, it was this a was, mo- but this was, but this motel, but this was my criticism to Mona. Mm-hmm. If you put two starving dogs in a room and throw one bone, they gonna kill each other for but it. But keep in mind, everybody lies about their position in life too. Mm-hmm. They try to act so big and high I and mighty. Don't. Well, I'm not gonna say everybody, yeah. but all these you know TV people. Yeah, the, yeah like there are a lot really, of people on the show. You do. really came at me, and this man has been to my my huge house in the hills. He's been to my condo at the W. He's been in my cars, plural, and all these things, and like he's seen like I pay for every meal we've ever had and whatever. So like, you know that I'm not hurting for a bag and you're really sitting here trying to make up just ridiculous things. Like, Oh, he was on section eight at the W. Well, when the fuck did that start happening? Cause I need a refund mm-hmm. for all this goddamn money I spent. And it's just so ignorant and stupid. Like you're, you're making up things about me that is really your life. Mm-hmm. But a lot of people that are intimidated by you will put their insecurities on you mm-hmm. in hopes to make well, themselves feel better. Well, I will say, I don't know about the section eight part. I did live at 1600 Vine when they first opened that building and they did have section eight on the f- second floor. Cause I lived on the sixth floor. And my maid was in the same building, and I know she didn't wasn't Wait, what I was you had a, your maid lived in there. We I ran into her in the elevator. <laughs> mm-hmm. How you get in the building? Well, no, I, on I was on eight. I was on that so side before out. Love and Hip Hop, and then mm-hmm. I moved to a house yeah, in I the remember, hills, I and then and then I moved back to. You the, remember the, Jill Marie the, Jones is our friend. I just wanted to know how we connected. <laughs> Matter of fact, me and Jill had the same exact uh, unit floor plan. Yeah. And uh, I actually love that. Oh, I had so much fun there. Then I moved to my house in the hills. And then I was buying a house with baby daddy. And we decided we would kill each other probably. So not to do that. And then I got my condo again and then bought another house. So it's just like whatever. But regardless of anything, there was never a time that there was a struggle. I was homeless at one point in, at, when I was a teenager. And I went through all the shit that I went through. So don't put shit on me that I didn't already do. Because I've earned my stripes. You know, right. I went through that. I slept in my car. Mm-hmm. I had moments where I was in a hotel too. Mm-hmm. I was 18. You were 28. Whatever. 30. I don't know. Same difference. But don't try to like you just make up things because it sounds salacious when you actually know the truth so, that's crazy so after seeing what Zell did um, to Ray and Ray being your friend do you think that Zell should come back next season I think he should get um, a one way coach middle seat layover on um, Spirit Airlines Frontier that is connection hatred. back that's to whatever <laughs> back alley he mm. came from and just continue to suck tricks for coins and you know figure it out maybe I don't know are you coming back next season though but Ray had it wouldn't a, be a show Ray, without Ray, her. Ray had a so <laughs> well. Ray had a fake boyfriend. Go on to ticketcleacher.com for Ray, Ray had a fake boyfriend. No, let me tell you some tea, and this is not what I'm saying because I'm. Are you talking about Ray. Vic the Leo? Oh, he has a he has a stage name. That's his name, Vic the Leo, the boy that was sucking all the dick and. So listen, went out. this is what I will say. So mm-hmm. when Ray did tell me about him, and I was like, "Don't bring that little boy on TV." Mm-hmm. But no, he doesn't want to be on the show. This is what kills him about everybody. Monique said this about. About um her, about her girlfriend and race race said this about Ooh, him. AD? Yes, and race said this about him. Like, no, they don't want to be on TV. They're doing it for me. A motherfucker that don't want to be on TV is not gonna be on TV for you, for me, for anybody else. Is That's AD true. and Monique still together? I don't. I mean, I know. I don't know. I don't know what the status of their relationship is. I know that they spend time together. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't really. I mean, I don't speak for people in their personal situations. I actually liked but, AD until her publicist reached out to bring her on the show, found out it was me, <laughs> and then canceled. I'm like, bitch, we didn't even we ain't checking for you anyway. <laughs> but um, if we want a white boy, we'll call that's Justin the thing Bieber. For me, speaking of I, Justin Bieber, have you talked to him? I, I saw him um, about a month ago. Ooh, a month you know, Masika and Justin was fucking. Did I ever say that? That's what the streets are saying. <laughs> the streets say a lot of things. You know you and Justin Bieber was up there getting it in. You Listen, That little just, boy, look. you gave him some pussy. Now look at him. He done fucked up the whole industry. <laughs> him and that damn First preacher. of all, you cannot put my vagina in places that I haven't put it, okay? <laughs> Once he took that little boy. That was that boy. That was before R&B. Wait, that was before me. tattoos. First of all, I didn't take him no fucking where. He came and found me. Oh. 
He, he hunted me I down, bet. sought me out. Yeah, let me check at that journal. <laughs> <laughs> no, the funniest thing, did Floyd ever tell you? How mm-hmm. Floyd DM'd me and told me to call Justin. <laughs> Real? And I was like, well, what the fuck? Because, you know, Floyd doesn't tweet himself. Yeah. Like, Floyd will pass his phone to Rilla mm-hmm. or pass his phone to somebody else. Mm-hmm. Like, tweet this for me. So I was like, who's, who's playing on Floyd's Twitter? Mm-hmm. You know, was, what, who's this? And it was John, you know, who does all their social media pages. Mm-hmm. And he was like, well, this is John. I was like, okay, this is just weird. So, so John, you call Justin and Justin pulls up and you say, what? Well, <laughs> little boy. So John. He was not ready for it was you. John Justin did not know. DMing me from Floyd's page to call Justin. And I said, well, what, what sense does that make? He was like, well, you don't follow, just, follow Justin, but you follow Floyd. Mm. So Justin was wanted to meet you. And this time, it was like 2012. It was before, like, it was cool to listen to his music. Like, you would go in the closet yeah. and listen to it because yeah. he wasn't, you know, fully black <laughs> yeah. yet. Yeah. But, you know, I was a Justin Bieber. I liked his music. I was like, hey, oh, I'm, you know. He, well, this was can- right after Canadian. the mushroom I'm Canadian. Cut, you know? We love so the Biebs. He, he was just starting to get his tattoos and he wasn't like Miley Cyrus black yet. But yeah. he was, you know, he was Justin Timberlake black-ish. Yeah. So, you know, I was like, oh, this it was cute. He's, mm-hmm. I'm flattered. So, you know, I was like, well, you give him my name. Call, him, call me. I ain't calling him. Mm-hmm. So you know he calls or whatever, and he's like, "Yeah, I want you to come out. I'm on tour." And I was like, "Well, you're a baby." He was like, "Well, I'm a baby billionaire." I was like, "Note it, mm. note it." And we've been friends ever since. So when he comes and he tries to flex on you, like, "Baby, I got this," like you know, like you're gonna be mine. Did you say, "Nigga, it ain't gonna work"? Well, why would I call him that first? Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, he's just a really cool person. He's a cool kid. Mm-hmm. He's a cool kid. He's a rock star. Let's be honest. Did he ever play that song with you that he has with Michael Jackson? He played a lot of records for me, that, a lot of them that weren't even put out at the mm-hmm. time. And there was, I'm sure it's been out, it's been put out since, but he played some song he had with R. Kelly about Pussy Lips. And I was like, what are you doing? Well, he doesn't, with your he, he song doesn't thank like, God he didn't he, put that he, out. He did release it's, a song it, with it, him it, and It's R. like online somewhere, no, I think. the song with him and R. And R. Kelly, was a single. he did oh. drop a song called PYD, which pretty, whatever it is. Pretty, but it, pussy, it, no, no, yeah. it was a good song. Yeah. It was off journal. But, yeah. I didn't hear the Pussy Dribble. PYD, I don't know what that's. Okay, so I'm sure you can find it on YouTube or just Google it. This song with Justin Bieber and R. Kelly about Pussy Lips. Okay. <laughs> all right so i won't ask you but no i did see him about a month or two ago at hyde how was that oh we just hugged and said great to see you he's in a good he's in a different place yeah i saw him at the soul house about two weeks ago and he literally looked like a raver like he just was <laughs> just walking around by himself with a hoodie on with a, I'm like, i mean think about it you've been bobby brown was there too so <laughs> i didn't know what was Wait, going on which soho Soul were you at because i'm at the LA. west hollywood one yeah. all the time so bobby and i have Bra- never seen either one bobby brown there. is sitting down having brunch and Justin's walking by, and I'm thinking, what type of party is this? Where are the favors at? I saw Laverne Cox there last time. She's really pretty in person. We were talking about Laverne. She's really uh-huh. pretty. I had mm-hmm. asked. Uh, I, I saw she looked at me, and I looked at her, and we we gave the okay, pretty bitch look, you know. <laughs> so I, I asked Melissa this question, and I'll ask you. So Laverne Cox is now saying that what is she? Yeah. Saying? So the, she was uh, quoted in uh, Attitude magazine by, and basically said that she's. Annoyed with men who just don't admit when they have sex with transsexuals. Like, you know, so I, you're... So I asked Melissa if she had I'm annoyed with that shit, too. Wait, but, but <laughs> yeah, if, if, if Melissa... If, I asked Melissa if you had a boyfriend that had sex with a tranny, but, you know, isn't doing that anymore, would you still be okay with that? And what did she say? She said, fuck no. Would you? Uh, no. Why? Because maybe he's just exploring the other side of a woman. <laughs> that was so disrespectful. Okay. <laughs> no, I mean honestly, I really believe in being honest and being open mm-hmm. with whatever your preferences are, and you shouldn't be judged for your preferences. There's somebody that's into what you're into, no matter how weird it is. There's definitely somebody for you. Mm, so, exactly. like, you if you have to lie to somebody to be with somebody in any type of way, that's cheating, mm-hmm. and that's like that's that's some weird shit like you got to convince me to feel okay about sleeping with you or being with you you're hiding something you're mm-hmm. not allowing me to make my decision and my choice mm-hmm. there are people that are fine with that and for the people that aren't you need to disclose that like mm-hmm. there's certain shit that I don't want to do in my personal life or my personal relationship that doesn't mean I'm judging you or you're a bad person that just means I don't want to roll around a bitch <laughs> okay so you got a guy and he admits he readily admits to you that some you know like he's had a relationship with the transsexual before are you still dating this guy are you does Although your interest wane we've come <laughs> to the end of the road <laughs> that ends that <laughs> okay. so would you ever be with a woman no no okay. i'm not attracted to women i think women are beautiful but i think they're great where they are how many times have you had to like convince a guy 
it's never going to happen. I don't like pussy. It's just, I don't even... And they, they swear they up and down. Wait, wait, every wait, wait, woman... Because the guy wants you to have a threesome? Is what you're saying? Like, like A lot of guys yeah. do. And a lot of guys just have this stupid, weird fantasy that is... Because let's be honest. Usually when you have like lesbians it's mm. usually like one that look like Chuck mm. and one look like AD Steve. like AD yeah it's usually not like oh the beautiful girls yeah. together just yeah you got a lip sip fam and then a you know butch. but <laughs> yeah. so like these uh, men Erica have these... Mena and uh, Rosa Costa yeah like they, you don't see that no I mean, well, it, I mean, it happens I'm sure I don't but it's really not have like, the you plug know. on the lesbian community yeah. honestly but I I'm not attracted to women and that's yeah. just how it is and the lo- oh I bet I can make you you know, I got something for the, you. The fuck? I got something for you. This is what I always say. Do you ever have plans on having contact with another penis? And then they're like, what? it's completely <laughs> different. And I'm like, how? that's how I feel about women. How? I think they're beautiful. I would say, but I, am I would strange. say, absolutely. I air five. <laughs> of course you would. Because it's like, yes. I, again, I don't care what you're into. If you're into it, that's great. But that doesn't mean that I'm into it. Yeah, exactly. And I yeah. might be into very some shit strange. that you're not either. Mm-hmm. So, so, so let me just live my life. So mm-hmm. what's going on right now that you want to promote? What are you working on? I know that you have a few things because yes. the makeup line, what else? Yes. Well, I just dropped a single with Jazzy Faye called PTOS put it on something and um we're about to shoot the video for that i'm really excited i dropped a single called oh three times it's like more of a kind of like latin like feel it's kind of cool and um i've actually been working with some really dope people in the studio so i think i have some really cool surprises that probably people wouldn't expect from me well i recently ran into you at the pretty little things party and i was surprised that you were out because i know you have that beautiful baby but your baby daddy was at the house watching her are you yeah. guys gonna drop a new song or any more any music from you two? There's a lot of things we're gonna drop. <laughs> you're, not pre- you're not pregnant. Oh God, no! I actually had a miscarriage. <laughs> really? Yeah, I was pregnant while filming. Re- wow. This season? Yeah, I was. Um, we Wait, got pregnant this again. Season? Yeah, we got pregnant again Ooh. in uh, <laughs> April or May, April, and I had a miscarriage at 11 weeks. And um, I actually said that in a scene that they completely edited out. Mm. And when my lovely PR reached out to VH1 PR and asked them why they edited it out, they well, said you know for VH1 legal PR purposes. Don't really respond. But for legal purposes, Nia was able to say it season two, and Bambi was able to say it on her franchise. And I think uh, what's uh, what that they had a, uh, miscarriages. Yeah, there was a lot of legal ones, but mine was illegal. <laughs> and what I realized was illegal was for them to portray my relationship with my daughter's father as anything other than the bullshit they tried to show. Anytime there's any scene or any comment or anything that puts our relationship in a positive light, mm-hmm. it just somehow gets deleted. Mm-hmm. But they always put in all of the lies and slander everybody else says. So, so you're Fetty D- Dayton right now. Um, we're we're at a great place right now. Okay. Um. You know, I feel like we've been through so much that it really there's nothing anybody can really say to me that, you know, he hasn't either already said himself. And I think we've kind of learned we have the same birthday. We act just alike. But well, you're not openly dating no other men. Well, I have a daughter. It's out of respect for her. Right, right. Like, no, and I, I respect yeah, that. Yeah, you know, like, you know, regardless of whether I'm dating somebody else or, or decide to date somebody else, I don't bring men around my child. And I'm not. And again, I never really did the public relationship thing anyway. Mm -hmm. Even when me and Willie were dating, no one knew until he put me on his Snapchat. And that's kind of usually how most things end up, you know, coming out. And it's not that it's a secret. Mm -hmm. It's just that, you know, I like to enjoy my privacy as long as I can. Mm -hmm. Because I know the second you tell somebody about something, they're going to start attacking it, tearing it down. And not everybody can handle that. Like, I'm very good with that. I don't care what Mm -hmm. you say. I don't care what you do. But some people are affected by that, you know. And I've dated people that are like, well, why would you post me on my page? You ain't ready for this. Mm -hmm. You don't want that these type of problem up. No, because sit down, be patient, mm-hmm. be quiet. You ain't getting posted. Mm-hmm. Do the and men really ask y'all to post yes. them on their Instagrams? Yes. Are you crazy? Yeah. Yes. And the and the funniest thing too, it would be like a lot of the bigger higher, bigger people. Yeah, they don't want to post. Like, well, you you post me first, and not double tap it. Are we really having this conversation at at catch right now? Like, relax. But um, no. So like me. Did you did you date Gucci man? <laughs> no, I like. <laughs> I lived in Atlanta during the music video era. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. You, when we were doing videos, we were getting a bag. It mm-hmm. was like you, Tay Hacker, uh, whatever. It was some really beautiful girls doing videos. We were getting like two, three, four grand a day, five grand a day, even six grand, depending on who it is or what you're doing. So I lived in Atlanta. I went to college in Atlanta. So every Atlanta rapper I know, like I ran into T.I. two days ago. I ran into CeeLo yesterday. Like mm-hmm. these are people that I've known for a long time. So I'm, 
uh, me and Gucci were friends. I, t- I tore my ACL the day he had a concert mm-hmm. and I ended up going to the concert. How did it become a rumor that y'all were dating? Um, Somebody, okay. So I went to one of his shows and I was mm-hmm. backstage and somebody posted a picture of us or something. And, then and automatically you're dating? And, and, uh, apparently. Yeah. yeah. That's all you got to do as a woman. All you got, it was, is, it is was stand one, next to a motherfucker. It was one and picture at a concert yeah. and all of a sudden it was this whole thing. But yeah. that was before like social media was huge. So it was on like media fake out or something. Mm. What do you think about the new Gucci though? He looks good. Oh yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> I think it's definitely a thing. And his, and his when, wife, they're yeah, beautiful like, couple. He, you know, he was doing a whole lot of drugs and just, you know, going crazy so i think maybe going to jail might have been the best thing for him because him up. yeah you're like you're not able to take these recreational drugs and and, and he got focused and, and you see tiara's body yeah she looks, she looks really good, good. she looks, she looks really good. great she looks really good yeah. like i'm not a i'm not a hater i cannot like be cool with you and still tell a fact that mm-hmm. she looks amazing the best i've ever seen her look and she looks like she's in a good place i just mm-hmm. want her to get away from the demons that she's still around like lazelle and those type of people because at the end of the day they're only using oh, the it. energy you got to they're only gotta using it mm-hmm. and it's just it's it's not worth it especially like when you've overcome these demons you hang around this people that still have them mm-hmm. it's only a matter of time so i'm just really hoping she stays on this positive path well listen i'm glad you came on the show and i'm glad you were just a really good uh conversation to well, have thank you. I mean, I'm still going to go to Alexis's uh, baby shower and so hopefully well, you see might be, you might you be there. the dad. I don't know. Oh, please. <laughs> if she got this dick, everybody would know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But thank you for coming. I'm going to follow you again on Hollywood Unlock. That's hilarious. Yeah, bye. Well, I feel like we made it then. <laughs> <Bye>. <laughs> thank you for coming, Mama. Thanks, bye, everybody. Guys.